everyone, happy holidays and welcome back to The Oily Life. So today we're going to be doing a melt and pour soap project. We're going to be making a peppermint curled soap. So to start off with, I have four ounces of Shea Butter Melt and Pour in each of these containers. I'm just going to get those heated up in the microwave until they're completely melted and then I'll be right back. Alright, so my soap is completely melted, so now we're going to add in our colors. We're doing Alpine Green from Nurture, and I just have the mica mixed in here with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. That just makes it easier to blend in. And then we're doing Trial by Fire, also from Nurture, which is a red, so we're doing a green and red here. And basically what these two first soaps are going to be is what we use to make our soap curls. And then I'm going to add in 15 drops of peppermint essential oil to each container. Peppermint is one of my favorite holiday scents, so I usually do at least one peppermint soap every year. Do you have a favorite Christmas scent? I'd love to hear what it is. Leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite Christmas scent is. All right, so we have our peppermint essential oil added. Now we're just going to mix these completely. Just give them a good stir, see if we need to add any more. Pretty sure I'll have to add more to the green. Since we're using a white uh, melt and pour soap base, it does take a decent amount of color to make the colors vivid in the soap base. So don't be afraid to use a little more mica than you may think you need. And if you prefer not to use mica, you can buy um, liquid soap colorant or brambleberry and Wholesale Supplies Plus has uh, coloring blocks, which is basically little blocks of melt and pour soap that are already colored. And then you just cut a piece of, of those off and put them in uh, with your soap and melt them all together and then um, you don't have to deal with measuring colorant or anything like that. And there's no need to worry about the isopropyl alcohol that you're adding um, into the mica. That will all evaporate out of your soap. Alright, so those look good there. So now I'm just going to bring my mold over. And we're just using two cavities. We're going to pour one color in each cavity. And these, this green and red will be the perfect colors for Christmas. Quintessential holiday. A lot of uh, traditional colors for Christmas. I do mix in some metallics as well, some silver and gold, but I uh, tend to stick more to the greens and reds for Christmas. All right, so basically at this point, we just let this harden completely. That'll take two to four hours. And then once they're completely hardened, we'll come back and make our soap curl. All right, and we are back for our next step. So our bars have set up. I actually let them set up overnight, hence the outfit change. So what our next step is going to be is we're just gonna take our bars of soap and a vegetable peeler and we're gonna go down the long side and just make some strips. And we're gonna make uh, quite a few strips out of each color. And then we'll, once we get all of our strips cut, then we'll start making soup curls in our mold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue making some strips here and then we'll be ready for our next step. Okay, and now that we got our strips cut, we're just gonna take the strip of soap and we're going to just make a curl so just roll it in on itself and then place it down in the mold you can make the curls as tight or as loose as you want and I like to kind of alternate the colors but you could totally do one color in each soap mold cavity so I'm just going to get these filled up here and I think these strips make it look like the candy ribbons that you can get at like old-fashioned candy stores. So it just, it's just kind of a different look you can add to your soap. All right, so now we have all of our curls in the mold. 
So for our last step, I have some white melting pour and some clear melting pour in these containers and I'm just gonna heat those up. We're gonna let them cool slightly and then pull, pour them over the soap curls. All right, so we have our clear and our shea butter mountain pour all melted down. So while we're waiting it for it to cool down, I'm going to add in 10 drops of the peppermint essential oil into each of these containers. Now you do want to make sure that it cools down quite a bit because otherwise when you pour it over your curls, it's going to melt them. All right, so I have the peppermint essential oil in each of our containers here, and we've let them cool down. Now, you totally could use just all clear or all white, but I thought it'd be fun to show you kind of the different looks you can get based on uh, which soap base you use. So I'm going to do the clear in three and the white in three, assuming I measured out correctly. We might end up with a little more of one than the other but we're gonna go ahead and start to pour it in and you want to make sure that you get it inside of all the soap curls and you want to pour kind of slow if you notice it's starting to kind of melt things then stop and let it cool more before you move on to your next one And the curls may start to take on some different shapes as you pour. You can just kind of give them a push back down if they move too much. I'm trying to get a little bit in this corner here. Whoops overflowed but that's all right do one of the white here and kind of just pour all over it nice and slow if any of the soap curls have stuck up above your mold you can just kind of plane those off afterwards all right and i'm just going to keep getting these filled up all right, so we will see how it goes on this set. Still feel like it might melt it some, but we shall see. I'm going to get a full clear layer on this one because I am out of clear. So this is going to be kind of a Kind of a combo platter. I don't know guys, we're at what, like a 50% success rate here so far. <laughs> this one's holding the curls pretty well. This one has a little melting, but not too bad yet. These are completely melted, and this one is somewhat melted. So it's definitely going to be an experiment. <laughs> Give these last couple a little spritz. I don't know, guys. We'll see how they turn out. We're going to let them set up. For two to four hours, I'll probably uh, come back and unmold them tomorrow. Um, but two to four hours is how long it would usually take. We got one that looks really good. And I think the other ones we're going to get a menagerie with. So we'll wait and see. I'll show you either way whether they turn out well or not well. And uh, we'll be back to unmold. All right, and we are back to unmold our finished soaps here. Uh, so as you can see, <laughs> it is now the next day. Uh, it will not take you three days to make this soap if you do not want it to take that long. It's just when I had the time to do it. So that was not, what's nice about this project is I could break it up and do just a little bit each day and it doesn't affect the uh, outcome of the soap. So I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can see how they turned out.
So they actually turned out much better than I was anticipating. And that's the thing with making soap. It doesn't always go exactly as planned, whether you're doing mountain pour or cold process. Little things like uh, humidity and temperature can have a big effect on how they turn out. So even if you do it the exact same uh, as you have done previously, it could still turn out differently. But I'm pleasantly surprised. I would say I'm really happy with four of the bars. One's okay and one's eh. <laughs> So here's our first bar here, and this is the one I just did uh, way too soon. I, I poured it when it was too warm, so everything's kind of muddled. Now the good thing about this is it's still a good bar of soap, so definitely can still be used based on appearance. I probably wouldn't give it out as a gift, but it's a good soap for if you go camping or something like that. You know, you can use it for while you're there and then toss it when you're done. Love how the peppermint smells. I'm a big fan of peppermint. I think I like the ones where I did the white shea butter the best. You can see you got the green and red swirls in there. It goes all the way through the soap. So really nice. And then the shea butter uh, mountain pour soap base will give it some more moisturizing power. But you could use like a goat's milk soap base instead or even an oatmeal one. That would give it kind of an almond color. Uh, whatever kind you like. This is the one that probably came out the closest to what I thought I wanted, but I like the ones with the white soap base better. I mean, you can really see the rings very, uh, really well, but it's okay. Then these last three are probably my favorite ones. Here's this one, you can really see the curls well. So like that one a lot. This one turned out really well. This is the one where I had a little bit of the clear base left. So that made the curls stand out really well. And then I used the white for the majority of it. So that's a really good way to try these. Just like a tiny bit of clear, the clear goes to like a quarter of the way and then white for the rest. And here's this one. So overall I think they turned out great. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it gave you some inspiration to try something new and to keep going when things may seem like they're not going to according to plan because you never know what the end results will be. So if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a big thumbs up. That really helps out my channel. And I hope you're going to stick around and subscribe and become part of my oily community here on YouTube. So take care and bye for now.